Hello, my name's Duncan. I'm a co-founder at MemberStack, and to celebrate the launch of MemberStack 2.0, um, I built this here upvote tutorial and upvote project using MemberStack and Make, and now I want to show you how it works. So in order to add this to your site, there's a couple things you'll need to do. The first one is that you'll need to copy over either just this upvote button or you can copy over this entire element and place it inside of a CMS collection list inside a Webflow. There are data attributes on these elements, which I have already set up for you, and I'll walk through how those work here later, but you wanna make sure you have those. And you also wanna grab your this Make Blueprint, which you can just upload directly into your own Make account, and I will walk you through how to set this up here in just a little bit. Before we go any further, um, I am here logged in to the project, and now, if I click on a button, it will change the color and increment up by one. If I refresh the page, it now changes. So the cool thing about this is that all this information is stored in my member stack account, and then the upvote count is stored in Webflow. So no matter how many people are on the site upvoting and downvoting, it's going to be keeping track for me. And each individual member will be able to see which ones they've upvoted or not, and only be able to upvote once. If they click a second time, it just removes the vote. Uh, by the way, hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. I'm actually out at a campsite right now. So, uh, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and walk through how this all works. Inside a Webflow, we have some code here in, uh, before the closing body tag on the page. It's a lot of code. So what I recommend doing is just copying all of this, pasting it into your site, and then uh, follow along for the rest where I show you um, how to set up the data attributes, and then this is all going to just work for you. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment in the video, and I'll see if I can help. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove myself here. We'll save that, and then let's check out our data attributes. So first one here is an element which is only visible to people who are not members. And this element is going to launch the pre-built member stack signup modal. Now, if you wanted to use your own custom signup form, then what you'd have to do is just click here and choose your signup page and then get rid of this uh, modal attribute. But I do want to keep the modal just because it's easier for me for this demo project. So this I'm going to leave it as it is. Then I'll click up once and we're now on the form. Here's the Webflow form block. And here is the actual form element with the attribute ms code equals upvote form. Inside of that, we have this upvote button with the um, attribute of ms code upvote button. And then we're going to dynamically pull in the CMS ID of the item into that button. So let me show you that over here in my actual form. So upvote button. And here we go. Uh, Webflow allows you to map this data into the button, which is great. Next thing we'll look at is our little HTML embed right here, where we are passing the member ID and the CMS ID. And all of this is getting submitted into our form so that we're able to work with it inside of Make. I have a submit button here, which is hidden. And then this was that first element we set up, which is overlaid on top of everything. Uh, member stack's going to hide this once I'm logged in, and then I'll be able to interact with the button. And that's it. Uh, everything else here is just a regular Webflow CMS collection item. This is really the only special thing here, which is our form, which submits the upvote data. If you decide to copy and paste either this element or this entire element, you will need to remap the CMS ID uh, for both this HTML embed, which I'm going to open up here. You can see you'll need to replace this with your CMS um, ID. And then you'll also need to do that for the upvote button right down here. You want to click in here and then change this to be the CMS ID. All right, with all of that covered, let's drop into Make and see what we're working with. Now, whenever you go to set up your Make scenario, you're going to need to configure the webhook 
Um, I just called mine upvote form. When you click add and then advanced settings, you want to give it a name. Uh, it'll pull your data structure in whenever you submit the form the first time. And then I turn all these to yes, just to be safe. Um, I'm not sure if they're required, but I set mine to yes. Then when you get here, it's going to ask you to determine the data structure. So what you'll do is go back over to your site, make sure you have your form set up, publish, and then submit the form after <laughs> uh, taking this webhook like endpoint and putting it in your form. So for me, that looks like this. On the form element, I have the action set to post, and then I have the webhook endpoint right there. And that's going to pass the data into make. Once that's done, you'll be able to view what the output is. And you should see your CMS ID, you should see upvoted true or false, and then the member ID. Uh, these might be blank for now since um, it depends if you already have member stacks set up or not, but it should be fine either way. Then you're going to use that CMS ID to look up the CMS item inside of Webflow. And you know what? Now is a good point for me to mention. If you don't have a CMS ID field in Webflow set up already, I'm going to link to another video which will show you how to retroactively add the CMS ID to all of your items and then also how to keep that updated going forward as you create new items. And once all of your CMS items have their ID as a field which you can interact with, then you'll be able to pass it through the form and pull it in and look, use it to look up the item. Then we'll want to set up a bit of routing to add or remove the vote. And uh, this, as long as you're using the code that I provided, then this will all work automatically. We will once again use the CMS item ID to find it and then we're going to add one upvote and submit this as live. And we'll return a response to the page, letting the site know the total number of upvotes. Same thing here. Instead of adding, we're gonna actually add negative one upvote, uh, thereby removing an upvote, publish that as live and then return the upvote count to the site. Turn that on and run it. And I think that's everything. Uh, at this point, we've set up our buttons. Oh, uh, we do need to add and remove styling. So let me, let me show you that real quick. So over here on the upvote button, add the class of is true, where we can apply some additional styling and then we'll remove that class uh, just save it somewhere on your site so that it doesn't get deleted whenever you go to clean up your classes. So now we have our styling, we have the make scenario set up, which is, and we have our code on the page, which is sending the data over to make through the form. Whenever we click this button, it's applying our styling or removing our styling, depending on what's needed. And we're using member stack to basically block access to this little upvote button, depending on whether or not the user is logged in or not. That's everything. If you have any questions or notice something that I missed, feel free to leave a comment. I am happy to help, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.